prepare thyself to follow me. Welcome to Haunted Vegas. And lastly, we are the suicide capital. So, I mean, look at this town, right? It's set up just for that. You come here, you do all the things that you're not supposed to do, right? Um, there's girls, there's guys, there's drinking, there's drugs, there's gambling, there's everything. And it goes all night and all day and all night and all day. And it can really do, do crazy things. This to see right here is the largest pyramid on the planet that's not aligned with any astrological bodies. Um, the py pyramids in Egypt are. Um, and also this pyramid uh, is like an atrium inside. As you can see, all of the balconies work their way up. And yes, we have had two jumpers inside the pyramid. Floor 22, we had a guy who was making a joke with his wife. He got on the other side of the railing and started, go, oh, tell me you love me or I'm gonna, and then he fell. He landed in front of the checkout counters. Again, <laughs> I'm not joking, okay? He landed in front of the checkout counters. The second one was on floor 26, and this was a um, Asian woman. She was sitting on the railings. The security tried to talk her down. No luck, and uh, she fell backwards. She landed in front of the entrance to the buffet. All right, so those are the two ghosts. People who stay on those floors say that cold spots follow them around on the balcony. And we actually had a, a maid, a couple of maids, housekeepers, they came in on the tour 10 years back. And they said when they work that hotel uh, on those floors, they work in teams of two. They work in teams of two. They uh, put door stops under the doors when they go in and out of the um, in and out of the um, uh, rooms. Oh yeah, the maids carry rosaries as well to to protect them when they're on those floors. Okay. From the top to the bottom is 1,189 feet. We've had four jumpers, and three of which. Uh, we know about and we're going to tell you about two that are haunting the, uh, the Stratosphere Hotel. So the Stratosphere All right, so the first jumper was a boy. Nobody knows exactly why, but he went up to the top of the Stratosphere, uh, got out, ran through the over the fence, through the moat over the next fence. The moat's filled with motion detectors. Security was notified, ran out. By the time they got out, he jumped. He landed through the roof of the casino into a fast food restaurant and landed in the back. This is, I'm not joking, I'm not just trying to be funny. He landed on the grill of the, in the McDonald's, okay? Um, imagine the worker's surprise. <laughs> One minute you're flipping burgers, the next minute, you know? Um, he haunts in the parking garage. That area is built to a parking garage now. The other was a guy from Utah. He um, was a good Mormon kid. And I was running a, a, a grocery store, managing one in Utah. And he borrowed his girlfriend's van for the weekend, told her he was going fishing, but instead came to Vegas. And he also didn't, he kind of forgot to do his nightly drop for the week, the money. He took it with. He figured he was going to double the money, go back to Utah, go, whoops, I forgot to give the drop. Here you go. And then I have my, you know, other $20,000 or whatever. Well, that didn't happen. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> he lost it all. After he lost it all, he wrote his church and his girlfriend a very long note apologizing for what he had done and said he could not live with himself any longer after doing that and decided to go up to the top and jump as well. He landed um, outside of the, the casino in the sidewalk area um, and he landed in the sitting position. He drove his spine into the concrete like a spike. They had to jackhammer around the sidewalk to get his get him out. Um, well, yeah, when you jump off the stratosphere, you think you start to fall at uh, 20 feet per second per second until you reach terminal velocity, and that means you can't go any faster because of the wind resistance, and at that point you're going about 130 to 150, depending on how you have your body in the air. Oh, this is the footage after the first jumper when he went through the roof into the restaurant. This is what he would have seen on his way down. So off the tower, and then down, right through the top of the roof of the casino, and you can see this just took place because they have a big sheet of plastic covering the hole where he fell. Now it looks small, but that's about the size of this vehicle, that hole, okay? 
that that was the roof that he punched through. Okay, so hauntings at the stratosphere. There is the up escalator. The man, the older guy, uh, uh, the, the guy from Utah, we believe is the one who haunts this. He haunts the up escalator, not the down, just the up, and he's what we call a loop haunting. Means he does the same thing over and over and over, never anything different. There's loop hauntings are, uh, definitely happen. So he haunts the up escalator. People say they see him riding it up to the top, but when he gets to the top, he vanishes. The other one, the boy who um, jumped, he haunts the parking garage. So people will see this teenage boy sitting in cars in the parking garage, and they'll describe him. So red, red uh, baseball cap, green shirt. People call security, and his kids messing around in these cars. Security comes down, doesn't find him. Security, at this point, it's been going on for so long. When people like call security and go, "Hey, we saw this kid with the thing." Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. We'll get right down there and check it out. <laughs> and then they do other things. Okay. Um, this is the Oasis Motel. We call it the Motel of Death. Um, as you can see, uh, anybody stay here? You guys stay in here? I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. It's $26 an hour. <laughs> and they got a jacuzzi fantasy room. You get a rash if you stay there. There's a wedding chapel in case in the morning if you decide, hey, that night of Dubakery wasn't too bad. Let's go get <laughs> hitched. You can do that. Can you drop me off there? You have, I'll drop you. We are going to drop Eric off at the Oasis tonight, okay? Yeah, he awesome. wants to watch the free movies. They're not Disney, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the Oasis Motel. It's downtown. It's right across the street from the Stratosphere and a little bit north on the Strip. Um, room 20 is haunted. There's been six deaths to accounts in there to this day. There's six deaths. And two of them were kind of famous. This guy right here, who is, no one knows, David Strickland. Nobody ever knows. It's okay. Brooke Shields TV <laughs> That's show. That's right. He was he was Todd on Brooke Shields. Suddenly Susan. He played opposite Brooke Shields. He was her boyfriend. Uh, after he died uh, from from committing suicide in the motel, they wrote him off the show as a mysterious death. Is what they said on the on the TV show. Anyhow, he came here in uh, the year was. 1999. He wow. and Andy Dick. You know Andy Dick? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Andy Dick. Go and hang out with Andy Dick, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Phil Hartman hung out with Andy Dick. He was supposed to take his wife to rehab. Saw what happened with that. Then he hung out with Chris Farley, right? He was supposed to take him to rehab. What happened with that? Then he's hanging out with this guy, and this guy dies. So hang out with Andy Dick. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here, uh, uh, David Strickland. Uh, and room 20. At the motel, you can see that there's still a little bit of uh, uh, the keep out of the things. This is right after it happened. This picture was taken. So, Andy Dick and him are at the Glitter Gulch on Fremont Street. It's kind of a seedy uh, strip club. <laughs> they party for the night. They leave. They leave the Glitter Gulch. Andy goes his way. David goes his, his way. So he goes down to the Oasis Motel and <laughs> checks in. Now, he could have stayed in any any hotel in Vegas, and he picks that place. All right, so <laughs> he, so he gets into the motel, into into the uh, uh, room, checked in, goes across the street to the White Cross drug stores, buys a six pack of Coors Light long necks, goes to his room, drinks all six, and then lines the bottle meticulously up, all six of them across his uh, nightstand. Then he strips the bedding off the bed, goes into the bathroom and in a, a beam above the ceiling hangs himself with the bedding from the bed he was found by a private investigator that was called when he hadn't when he hadn't been seen for a few days the private investigator tracked down the motel and that's how the discovery of david strickland's body was made um, they say that he was off of his uh, he was on antidepressants and he had just stopped taking his antidepressants a couple uh, of weeks now, before if you hour. go to room 20 and you check into room 20 here's what people say that they hear happen in the room. They say the water in the bathroom turns on and off by itself. They can hear footsteps that walk across the second floor, but there is no second floor, so they're hearing footsteps across the ceiling that doesn't exist. And they hear moaning and groaning coming from the walls. Of course, knowing what the place is, that could be the room to the right or the left of you, but anyhow, that's what happens at the Oasis Motel. Now this, watch this footage. This is taken in the shower stall of room 20 some of our guests came on the tour. They went there. 
luckily got room 20 because if you go request it they won't give it to you they don't want the the publicity so they got room 20 though and they did this uh, video watch this this is an orb in motion it's going to come up from the bottom of the screen it'll appear out of nothing and then it'll it'll dematerialize into nothing which is how we know it's not the reflection of a bug's wings or something okay watch it happens quick there it goes oh, yeah. okay we'll do it again in slow motion for you so you can really get a look at this it, it really comes out of nowhere look at this and then just see? it just dematerializes so and it also looks like it doesn't reflect light as much as it absorbs it it looks dull it doesn't look reflective like so that's another thing that says that it's probably not a bug or a piece of dust okay and there you have it. That was the Haunted Vegas Tour, which is one of the tours that Vegas Specialty Tours offers. I am here with the go-to ghost tour guy of Vegas. This is Big Al. That's really his name. Big Al, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I just We just took the tour. We were driving all over town. That's what I kind of liked about it, wasn't it? Because yeah. a lot of these tours are like walking tours. And sure. This one, we're in a nice air-conditioned van. Mm -hmm. We're going, we went to the Haunted Park. Uh, we went to all these different... Uh, uh, Red Fox's house, all over Vegas. So that's kind of a relief, just like sit and ride. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just found out a lot of interesting stories. So tell us a little bit about your company and how we can set up one of these tours and the different types of tours you have, actually. Sure, so so VegasSpecialtyTours.com is our main site, and we offer a few different tours. We have the Vegas Mob Tour, which is, uh, if you've seen the movie Casino, you gotta take this tour. It's the real story behind the movie, plus you get a lot more uh, background and history of the town, uh, mob history. Our other tour is the Haunted Vegas, which is the one Eric and I are just on, and just, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. it was fun, right? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's our Haunted <laughs> Vegas tour. Even your jokes. Yeah, well, you know, some of them are I can't guarantee anyway. his jokes, Not, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I try. <laughs> <laughs> but Vegas, the Haunted Vegas Tour is the longest running and the original ghost tour here in Las Vegas. Uh, we've been operating now for 16 years. And wow. uh, yeah, and um, we also have another ghost tour, which is eh, I think about eight years old now. And that's the Good Springs Ghost Hunt. It takes you out to the town of Good Springs. You visit the Pioneer Saloon. You see, uh, you have dinner there. You see the cemetery, the schoolhouse, the cabins that the the, the uh, miners lived in it's it's a great it's a great tour yeah. everybody uh, loves it yeah ghost adventures filmed yeah. an episode there they did as a matter of fact and the founder of our company was on that episode robert allen oh, which wow. we talked about this evening oh, wow. on the okay. haunted tour because gonna, he, he actually is on the tour now he, he haunts us i'm gonna look that up that's cool <laughs> it's pretty wild so anyhow that's it and then we do the um the uh, good springs ghost hunt and that's it so um those are the tours that we have and if um if you guys want to know more about them, go to www.vegasspecialtytours.com and you can learn about all of our tours there and you'll also see what's new for 2020. And I am going to add a link to that website right below the screen here. So you click on it from this video, click on the link and get in contact with Big Al. He will take care of you. Sir, Indeed. I had a blast. Thank you again. Thanks a lot, Eric. Thanks for watching. Yep. Uh, this is Wild Card Journeys. Uh, my channel, I hit the road to make videos about the paranormal, various urban legends, or whatever might be out there. If that sounds like you're kind of traveling, hit subscribe, share it with a friend, and we'll see you on the journey. Well, there you have it. That was the Haunted Vegas tour as part of... Uh, Vegas Specialty Tours. I'm sorry, I'm going to try one more time. Uh, one of Vegas Specialty Tours tours. Okay. All right. <laughs> that sounds That's stupid too, right? That's no. a lot of tours. You gotta...